Billy with Gilbert Travels here. It's an early morning at SeaTac Airport. Come with me to the Delta Sky Club and we'll talk about today's flight. So this morning, we're gonna be with Delta in their Delta One product on the 757-200 in a 2-2 configuration on a Diamond Legacy Life Lab product, which should be a nice flight today over to JFK. Excited to give Delta a try since my last attempt to fly in their premium cabin last summer. Uh, things were pretty grim in terms of service then, but it sounds like things have changed a little bit. Let's get on board and find out. While a normal domestic first-class ticket does not provide lounge access on Delta, their Delta One ticketed flights like this one do. With a great club to get into like Seattle's, that's a big benefit. Delta even positioned our flight just two gates away from the door, which was nice to maximize time in the lounge this morning. Since my last visit to this lounge, Delta has brought back a full hot self-serve buffet, as well as real plates, although still using plastic utensils. The automated espresso machine also provides a good morning pick-me-up and saves a pricey airport coffee shop stop. Overall, I continue to be impressed by the quality of the food at the Sky Club for a non-premium lounge compared to, say, the American Admirals Club. Nice to see the Sky Club back open with good food selection here this morning. Nice to relax here for a few minutes before we head over to today's plane. While this was my busiest visit to the Sky Club, it still has a lot of space between the two levels and a wide variety of seating to choose from. Anyway, time to head over and get a view of today's flying pencil, the 757. Delta operates the largest fleet of 757s out there, both the 200 and the longer 300 varieties, in a total of six configurations. This one, denoted 75S, has 16 lie flat diamond business class seats in four rows in a 2x2 configuration. It also has 44 Comfort Plus extra legroom economy and 108 main cabin economy seats for a total of 168. That compares to 235 seats on the longer 757-300, which features traditional domestic recliners in the forward cabin. Here we go. One of the real Avgeek treats of any 757 though is boarding from door two, just forward of the wing, which allows you to turn left into the forward cabin and immediately settle into your seat without the entire plane streaming by you during the boarding process. So welcome to Delta One, or at least a flavor of it. While Delta has used this branding to denote their closing door suite they launched on the A350, they now use it for all of their business class products. The 757 is the only narrow body aircraft in their fleet to feature a Delta One cabin, and yes, that does mean this aircraft is used for international long haul operations. However, on select routes here in the States, these aircraft and others with lie flat seats are marketed and sold as domestic Delta One tickets. This entitles you to a more premium experience on board, in addition to the aforementioned lounge access, and other perks like priority check-in and security. Not all domestic flights with lie flat seats, however, are sold as Delta One, so make sure to look for that difference when booking. While this cabin lacks direct aisle access for window seat passengers, it is nice when you know your traveling companion, as in this case, I'm traveling with my daughter next to me, making it a real treat all around. Let's have a look at the features of today's seat, 3F. Towards the aisle is the airline literature pocket, entertainment remote, and the controls for the seat functions and presets. At the front of the armrest is a built-in drinks table, and below that is the main deployable tray table, which can come out in two stages, and has a little wood finish, a nice touch. Between the seats is a frosted glass divider, however the divider also cannot be moved, making conversation with a seatmate you do know a bit awkward. Toward the window, you have a height adjustable armrest, which also has a fair amount of space outside of it, good for a small bag or to stuff your bedding in. Over your shoulder is another storage cubby with a built-in bottle holder, as well as your USB, universal power, and a headphone port. Speaking of which, Delta does provide their studio branded headsets on these flights, which are okay if you don't travel with any of your own, but they are not noise canceling and pretty mediocre quality. Delta One does also come with their excellent long haul Weston Heavenly bedding, which we'll explore later. Do note that amenities kits are currently suspended on domestic routes. Lastly at the seat a water bottle was waiting for us. 
This was the only pre-departure service on today's flight. Returning to the seat itself, it's a pretty nice delta red and blue scheme, although it lacks any headrest adjustment. The forward view is a nice, large, and clear entertainment display, which is touch enabled. Below that is a convenient little shelf for your smaller items on board, and under that is the foot cubby, which is a little tight and it's currently full of all the bedding. The seat itself has plenty of space with endless legroom for someone over six feet like myself. Just to the left of my shoes is an additional shoe cubby space, which on my aircraft had been knocked loose, but still worked. Well, that's a look at the seat, and the sun is coming up, so let's get in the air on today's flight, and we'll see how service on Delta One is here in late 2021. While we head to the runway, let's discuss Delta's response to the pandemic, as I've chronicled on this channel. Back in 2020, Delta really took a strong stance on COVID, cutting basically all onboard service, blocking middle seats, boarding flights from rear to front, and much more. However, this meant that their premium cabin domestic product really suffered. When I last flew Delta's forward cabin domestically, the only service was a shelf-stable snack box full of junk food, the kind you used to be able to buy in economy, and drink service included only water, beer, and wine. And yes, I mean only water, beer, and wine. This, however, is a new year, and the seat blocking is over, and even economy now gets a full drink service again. But how are things here in Delta One? Let's find out. Here we are in the air on a bright morning with yet another amazing view of Mount Rainier and the accompanying Cascades mountain range dusted in some November snowfall. I do not know if it's possible to get tired of these views coming out of SeaTac. Back inside the plane, it's time to recline and get out today's bedding. Last year they were only using the lighter woven day blanket for domestic Delta One and this is the real overnight duvet instead. I must say it's a bold decision on an airplane to go with pure white, but this is a really nice blanket with a plush pillow to match, and it really does feel a bit like a hotel in the sky. I think this could be my new favorite US airline blanket, so good job Delta. And just like that, service has begun. Gone are plastic and paper cups, back are real glasses, and ceramic coffee mugs. This almost feels like the good old days, although I still miss my hot towel. Delta One does entitle you to pre-order a meal in advance of your flight via an email about five days before check-in or via the Delta app. This included two hot options, a feta and chicken sausage quiche or hazelnut pancakes. The additional cold options looked okay, but I wasn't about to give up a chance for a warm airplane meal. Gotta tell you, this looks pretty good. Last time I flew Delta, all they were serving was snack boxes from their former economy buy on board menu. On most of their domestic flights, they're now serving uh, cold meals in cardboard boxes. But here on Domestic Delta One, we've now got hot food. Check it out. And here is breakfast, with the main dish accompanied by brioche, jam, fresh fruit, and a cheese, grapes, and nut mix. Served on a single tray over a tablecloth, accompanied by a real napkin and silverware. Also on the tray were these adorable little salt and pepper shakers. While it still isn't a multi-course gourmet experience, I don't take this kind of airplane food for granted anymore. I will say though, that the pengies were a bit dry from reheating. The berry reduction they were served with was tasty, but it evaporated mostly during reheating. If they just included a little package of syrup, this could have been a much better meal. The little chocolate filled brioche, however, was a real winner. Let's have a look at today's entertainment display. Delta has continued to commit to onboard IFE screens, so of course this premium cabin has a really nice one. I appreciate the aircraft information pages that Delta provides, and I think it's a fun avgeek touch. 
The system has access to live TV, as well as pre-recorded shows, and it meets a decent binge count of 10 consecutive episodes, as well as plenty of new release movies. On offer as well is Delta's nice full-color 2D tracking map. A nice touch, however, that I notice is it can be displayed picture-in-picture picture over your entertainment selection. If you fancy communication with the outside world, the aircraft is Wi-Fi enabled with a steep $40 charge for this one flight. Delta does, however, provide free text messaging, so I went with that for today. At this point, the cabin was dimmed, we had three hours left in the air to sit back and relax. So I ordered up an old-fashioned cocktail to nurse as this country rolled under us. Things remained cloudy over the U.S. heartland, so I kept my shades down and took advantage of such a nice seat for this domestic flight. However, you may very well find yourself in this seat for an international long-haul overnight journey, so let's bring it all the way down to a bed and see how it would do, especially with that tight footwell. So my thoughts on the bed here. I've been in the United version of this plane in the uh, bulkhead row, which has a wider footrest, but it's really, really shallow. I'm still pretty tight in here. If this was an overnight flight and I had to sleep uh, being six foot two, all the way up here, my head against the uh, wall, my toes are still jammed in the bottom, so I would definitely have to sleep with my legs bent or on my side, which is a little less than optimal, but uh, definitely a consideration if you're going to look at this airplane for a longer international flight. The last bit of service on today's flight was a pass at the snack basket, and finally the sky started to clear a bit as we got to the east side of the country. Before we head back to the ground though, let's talk a bit about today's booking. I took this trip the day before Thanksgiving, peak travel time here in the States, and I was very glad to find early availability on this flight for $548, which is less than double the economy price of $309. When you consider everything you're getting in Delta One nowadays, that's a pretty strong value. When you add in that I had a $100 free promotional credit from Delta and a $120 unused flight credit, those brought my ticket down to $327. Add to that an additional $75 statement credit from an American Express offer I had, and I paid only $252 for today's seat. Now that's a real bargain. To be fair, overall I booked three tickets on today's flight, and that comes out to a total average of $416 per seat, which again, that's a really good price, and it helped us all feel well rested upon arrival. Nice to see Delta has improved their service quite a bit since last year, bringing back hot meals with pre-orders and real glasses, and it's very comfortable here. Appreciate the real bedding and duvet set. Would be nice if they brought back their amenities kits to these transcontinental flights, but overall it's definitely a big step up from Delta for their uh, most premium domestic product. It's not quite at the level of, say, JetBlue or American's flagship first, but uh, did enjoy my flight here today. Hope you enjoy the rest of uh, our approach and landing into JFK. Thank you for coming along with me today on Delta. One here on the 757 200. Billy with Gilbert Troubles here. Thanks for coming along on that one, and I will see you on my next flight. Please remember to like, comment, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be made aware first when more content is available. As always, thanks for watching.